Welcome once again to another installment of Old War Stories with Uncle Jay. Another story on the 87 Camry. This one is entitled, You Really Should Stop for Gas, Dad. Well, uh, I was in the fourth grade at the time, um, 1990, no, 89, 90, 1990, 80. Yeah, 1990, I believe, early 1990. Um, we went on vacation as a family. My parents in the front, my sister and I in the back, and there we are on a family vacation, you know, Griswold style, except not in the family truckster, or what was then the family truckster. Anyway, the car was pretty new. It was only, oh, two, three years old. So still a pretty new car, still drove like new, all that. Anyways, um, we went on vacation. I don't remember where it was. We saw a couple of things that, it's kind of funny. We went to, I'll, I don't know if this is the right vacation for this, but we went to Old Sturbridge Village, which I think was in Massachusetts. Could be wrong on that, I don't remember. And, you know, you see old war cannons and stuff like that. My dad was, you know, Revolutionary War, shit like that. Civil War, whatever the fuck it was. I had no interest because I hated history, or as we called it, social studies. Had no interest whatsoever. My sister was the same way. We just didn't care. But, you know, it was give some, take some. So, one or two days we did that. And then we went to an amusement park. Now, I wasn't really big on amusement parks. I was, I was as a little kid, and I think by the time I reached age 10 or so, somewhere in there, I got off a ride and I just didn't feel good. And that was pretty much my tenure on fast roller coasters and things like that. Slower rides, I was fine on. But at this park, they also had water rides. These are the kind where it's not a water park, it's like a log flume kind of thing. But, oh boy, they had some technical difficulties. I don't remember full details, but you were in this motorized raft sort of thing. Um, big black, like, inner tube looking thing, which is what you the, gave the buoyancy. And I think it had a gas engine on it. And you didn't steer it or anything. Somehow it steered itself in the track. Maybe it had a cable that went under the water to something in a track or some crap. I don't know what the details were. But there was an area where the ride got sort of jammed up. Now, I don't think this was supposed to happen. Maybe it was, but it got jammed up. There was a gate, okay, that would close and open like this. And when it would open, it would allow a couple of rafts through, and that was pretty much the end of the ride. But, as the final soaker of the ride, uh, they had these like water cannons. They were pipes that would just stick up at some sort of angle like that. And every near now and again, a big pump would drive a particular one of them and you'd just hear <laughs> some sound like that that I vaguely remember. And a huge shot of water would shoot up. Now, if you ever took the hose, the garden hose, and just pointed it straight up in the air and just sprayed like a fat stream, a steady, you know, pinpoint stream straight up, and you kind of didn't point it in the right direction, sometimes you get a shower. Well, let's make that like a two-inch fucking PVC pipe that that water came out of with force that drove it way the fuck up to the sky. So when that came down, that was a bit of a downpour. Now, hit, getting hit a couple times with that wasn't too bad. If anything, maybe the water would fall on one person and that, but we were stuck. It was like bumper cars and the thing would open and close and it just wasn't working right and the, the, the rafts wouldn't get through and shit like that. And how does this relate to the car? I'll get to in a second. Uh, but I just remember we got fucking wrecked on that ride. Anyways, that was that. End of the day, um, we had, I think we checked out of the hotel that morning, so we had all the stuff packed, and from that place, we were going to leave and drive home. It's now a Sunday night, and 
I was in the fourth grade and we had to start driving. We had a good four hour drive, if not even six. Don't remember what time we got in the car, but the next thing I know, uh, it's starting to get dark out. Now we were driving for a couple of hours and we're sitting, my sister and I sitting in the back, we're wet, we're uncomfortable, we're miserable. I always sat behind the driver's seat. So I got to see, looking through underneath the, uh, what do you call it, the headrest, in that area, you know, underneath it, I used to, if I put my head the right way, I could look at the gauges sometimes and see, or I'd lean forward and look at them and stuff, just because I was interested in cars and that. And again, I might have been 10 years old or something like that at the time. Well, we're driving and I happened to notice that we were getting rather low on fuel. Uh, you want to stop and get some gas, Dad? No. We don't need any fucking gas. What are you talking about? No, it's like really low. Did you look at it? Oh, we got plenty of gas. We got a quarter of the tank. We can go around the world three times on that. This car gets great gas mileage. Well, <laughs> you know where this one is going. Drive for a half hour longer. Hey, Dad, you want to get gas now? No, we got plenty of gas. Fucking, you know, lights on now. Shit like that. And a lot of people are getting on pins and needles when they get down to a quarter of a tank. Much less if the light ever goes on. Well, this light was on, and now we're driving for like another fucking half hour for, uh, with, the, with the light on. This thing is fucking pinned empty. And my dad was waiting until we got on a bridge and crossed into New Jersey. Memory is faltering me at this moment on that exactly, but New Jersey had cheaper gas than the state we were in and New York, so my dad wanted to fill up there. Well, needless to say, I kept pestering my dad and pestering my dad and he got increasingly more and more angry. And finally, to shut me up, we actually stopped and got gas. We got exactly one gallon. There, shut the fuck up, you little twerp. Whatever the hell he said to me, I don't remember. We got plenty of gas. And now we got more gas, so we're not running out. <laughs> we ran out of gas. We were on the approach to said bridge, whatever bridge this was, and there's traffic. It was late at night at this point. Um, it's dark, 8, 8.39, something like that, and the car stalled. The check engine light came on and my dad says, uh-oh, and we pulled off to the left side because we were in the left lane, and uh, he put it in park and he tried restarting it, and it didn't restart because it was out of fucking fuel. Well, now the story gets a bit interesting because he ended up trying to start it a couple times hoping that maybe some gas would flow in the line and we'd just get over the bridge so he could get his cheap gas. That's all it was, folks. All about the cheap gas. So anyways, it stalled. And for whatever reason, with no fuel, the car just made this sound. I, I can't explain it. Where you'd turn the key and it would like turn over one, two, three times, and then it would go like, tick, 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 something like that. And after giving up after the third try, he says, I'll be back. And he put the flashers on and left. And we sat in the car in silence. Well, I don't know if it was in silence. I had a tape player with me. The batteries may have gone dead on that too, I don't remember. I had one of those Walkmans with the cassette and that and headphone, you know, the kind with the metal band on your ears and the foam things and that. We didn't have earbuds or any of that crap in those days. So my dad got out of the car, <clears throat> uh, rummaged around in the trunk looking for a jug or bottle of some kind to get some gas and wasn't able to find anything. 
Um, I don't know what he ended up taking with him or anything like that, but he went over to Across the Grass Median, and it so happened that after you cross six lanes of traffic that are all coming out of toll booths, <laughs> there was a steep embankment and a chain link fence, which I don't think had any barbed wire at the top, or if it did, he was willing to take the chance. And he stood there and he watched the cars and watched the cars and watched the cars. And I remember it felt like five full minutes that he stood there and watched these cars. And finally, he decided that his life wasn't worth it. And he came back and we didn't have cell phones in those days to call for help. So you had to walk or something and it was really too far to walk, nor would they let a pedestrian on the bridge. So we're kind of stuck there. Uh, I, I don't know how he did it, but there was a car stuck in traffic and he went up to it and he knocked on the window and explained, hey, my car is out of gas. Uh, there's a gas station right there. Do you think you can give me a lift to it? Uh, I, you know, I, I apologize. I don't know if he threw him a couple dollars and the next thing you know, he got in the back seat of a stranger's car and he basically hitchhiked to the gas station. When he got there, he found a dumpster, which he rummaged around in, found a jug of some kind, I think an old antifreeze jug or something. They had free air and water in those days, so he took the water hose and rinsed it out real good. And he got a jug of gas and came back to the car. Sometime later, I think the people dropped him off again. Uh, I'm sure he threw them a few bucks because that was more than a big favor to ask. And... Uh, now we had to get the gas in the car without a funnel. Well, my dad is very resourceful. And of all things, of all things that he had in the car were IBM cards. Yes, that's right. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about those cards that the ancient computers back in the 50s and 60s and that used. Punch cards. Real Honest to goodness, IBM stamped punch cards with the numbers on it and fucking everything. Those cards, by the way, as a little tidbit, were very, very precisely machined. They were milled down to an exact thickness. In fact, they used to use those as feeler gauges because they were that exact. They were exactly the same size, all of them. We used to actually have such a stack of them. We used to use them as like um, no, no paper, notepads. The back of them were blank and the front had all the numbers on it. So you just use the back side and you write down a list for the grocery store, what have you. I'm sure he still has some lying around somewhere, but I haven't seen him in years. Uh, I'd love to get my hands on a few of those. Anyways, he had IBM punch cards and somehow fashioned a funnel with that and was able to pour the gas in the car at which point then it started up one little detail i remember that makes no bearing on the story remember a lot of these stories just like if you remember the story that sharky told sharky 626 told on my fourth of july series back whenever that was um he told the story of the bmw driver uh, with the cell phone and hydroplaning and that, and there were a lot of details like, well, we were in the middle lane, or maybe it was the right lane. A lot of these stories have little details that really don't make a difference, but are important to the teller. So that's why I'm giving you the details. Anyway, one other detail that I left out, I remember hearing that horrible sound that tick, 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 that the engine made, trying to start it with no gas, and I remember saying to my mother, don't try to start it. The bitch turned the key five minutes later. And it made that sound again. Really pissed me off. Really pissed me off. And that's why I'm giving you that detail. Because I remember that to this day. Some, oh shit, 28 years later. So it's an important little detail in my book. Uh, we got gas. We got the engine started. It started up no problem. And we went and we got our cheap gas and filled up and we walked in the door at 10 p.m. The original goal was something like 7 or 8 
and obviously because of the trouble it lasted for a couple more hours um, I remember my sister and I begging and pleading with our parents that we didn't want to go to school the next day because we were up so late and they weren't having any of that shit nope fuck you you're going to school so the next morning I remember I went in and my teacher was Mr. Schick that was his name and uh, he said, okay, uh, we're going to start with math today or whatever it was. So uh, everybody get out your math textbooks. And I raised my hand. And he calls on me and I said, I'd like to tell a short story if I may. Oh, yeah. Last night we were driving and blah, blah. And I told the entire story to the class. And everybody's like, what the hell with your dad, man? <laughs> So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this another install this uh, another installment yet again of old war stories with Uncle Jay this time again concerning the 87 Toyota Camry. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.